The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. This is truly a profound moment in the ministry of Jesus. This is truly when he, as God's son and great messenger, gives the new commandments of the new covenant. The new commandments that are grounded in that divine love, that are about that d divine love, that stretches our hearts and minds to think of something radical. Blessed are you when you do feel challenged in the spirit, but you cling tightly to God. Blessed are you that are truly humble, and you don't let that I me mine world get you thinking about the self more than being about and thinking and loving other people. For you will inherit the earth when God said it was good. And then that snake and that apple will completely be vanished. And we know that when Jesus was pinned to that cross, the hands and the voice and the feet of God, they tried to asphyxiate. That's, that's a part of the reality of the death of the crucifixion is asphyxiation, meaning that they, the way that you're hung on the cross and the gravity drags you down, you struggle to breathe and speak. And those hands, those hands that brought healing and imparted miracles and blessed were nailed to that cruel, horrible piece of wood, that punishment for the Pharisees did not like the politics of Jesus. They thought it was all about that. They thought they were thinking through the world's lens and they did not see divine love. They thought he's perverting justice and he's going to take away our seat of power. And those feet that walked on the ground with those other, his beautiful apostles and disciples, they thought they had completely nailed down and ended. But as we know, when that stone rolls away on Easter, he is resurrected indeed, and we are resurrection people. And this is his beautiful, profound gospel. This is his beautiful message that is to be the epiphany, to be the epitome of what God wants us to be and do, that golden rule. He wants us to love him, to believe in him, to receive that love, to incorporate that love, and to share that love, to share that love while we, of course, love ourselves in the right way. And I've said that before. Loving ourselves in the right way, having faith in ourselves, because God has faith in us. And who are we? Who are we? But we are children of grace and promise. 
and the communion of saints of many ages. They weren't saints when they were on earth. Nobody's a saint, okay? And probably uh, people that we call saints today had sinner sides to them, but they, they, they started hearing some of this. The, the Beatitudes were like that protein power bowl of, of, of spiritual chipping away at that little mustard seed of grace and that new nature planted within us to get us to think, hey, you know what? If I do get persecuted or I do have bad things happen to me because I did the right thing, that's a part of that blessedness. Blessed to be a blessing to help other people. That is my ministry, not only here this morning, but every day when I'm a chaplain. When I see injustices in different places, I can't be silent, nor should I be. And I, I, I need to be generous even when I feel insecure. Don't we have moments like that? We know the Christmas season coming up, Thanksgiving coming up, thinking, well, you know, you get, get those mailings. Can I help somebody out? Or should I really just keep saving this and worry about the future? God never wants us to worry. But, you know, we got to think about how we... Ooh, yeah, but better not knock over the TV. They'll kill me here. <laughs> but think about things that pin us down. How does the world pin us down to be free? How do they take away our freedom from speaking the truth about love? You know, um, today is kind of a, a sad remembrance for me when we speak of the saints of past. I'm sure we have lots of family members who are there in God's great garden. garden. But today is the one year anniversary of uh, my dad dying in front of my mother of a heart attack. He just fell over in the hallway and she saw him die. And my, my last goodbye with him was like a, about a month earlier. But my dad was certainly not a perfect person, okay, as an example here. He certainly wasn't perfect, but he always was very generous. He was generous to a fault. And they weren't people of faith. I was the only <laughs> freak of the family who got into ministry. No. <laughs> well, but, you know, that's what's beautiful about thinking of All Saints Sunday, is the people that we meet in our life's journey. Like many of the beautiful people I've met here, you know, there's something that glows about your person that I can see the beauty of God alive in you. And you know, that's that little saintly side. And we got our little nasty side too, our little Beelzebub. Our little, our little Satan on the shoulder guy. But this, being grounded in Christ, a sense of radical departure from being and settling for justifying sin, settling for that old nature. Okay, God just gives me free grace, and, um, you know, I don't really have to do anything for it. And that's really not the right way to think of what Jesus gave us, his beautiful gift of that self-sacrificing love, becoming that crucified Lord, and taking that profound injustice. And I, I had a very disturbing dream when I was thinking about these te texts. I thought about wondering about that moment, that human side of Jesus, when those nails were going through his wrists and pinning him to that horrible cross, that in his heart he, he felt the tears of God here they said, we reject your miracles. We reject who you've healed. We reject everything that you've tried to do for us. So we're pinning down your hands. And then pinning down his feet. You can't go anywhere now. And, and they were so dead. They were so dead in their sins. The Pharisees and the scribes and all those uh, political figures. 
And you know, Pilate was uh, guilty of his indifference. He was guilty of his indifference. He said, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm just like the clerk here. And I don't want to be bothered with knowing that, yes, he's a truly innocent man. And I don't know what to believe. You know, and we know that that's tipping into that gospel uh, that we hear around Easter, uh, those days to Easter. But the reality of the saints is there's been 2,000-something years of witness. Just think about that, of amazing witnesses. Even today, we don't hear about it on the news. We hear about on, you know, everything except about the true work of people in the world, about the true mission of people in the world. But there's tons of martyrs or people that are being killed every day in Africa for being Christian and trying to spread the good news. Even in this past century, Dietrich Bonhoeffer could be considered, you know, a 20th century martyr because he didn't have to go back to Germany. And probably his friends and everyone else and his congregation said, please don't go. What are you, what are you nuts? What are you doing? But, you know, it's that radical living, that radical listening to Jesus' words here. Blessed are those who persecute, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. We can't be a quiet voice. And that's that Holy Spirit, too. The Holy Spirit is, you know, a, a God's little arm here to do that spiritual two-by-four to us. We can't be indifferent. We can't be indifferent to uh, a, a world and a culture that says it's uh, waking up or it's awoke. Because we have to think of being a children, a children with a culture that is supposed to be loving and serving and helping others. Service is really bad today. Uh, I say this literally yesterday because um, I had an appointment made three weeks in advance for an eye doctor. And um, they canceled my appointment and said they didn't have enough help to serve me. And that, hey, we can give you another appointment two weeks from now. And I'm like, so five weeks? What am I supposed to use a little white cane? You know, I can't read any print. So it's like, this is all blurry. But, you know, that's becoming the new norm. I talked about that with some uh, friends of mine, and, and that, okay, well, because of this excuse, or because of that, or because I don't have to, I don't really have to commit to serving, or going that extra mile, or doing something. And that, that's, that's, how, that's how the divisiveness of evil will not hear this blessedness and not hear the radical truth of Jesus. The radical truth of Jesus, that his Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, taps on the door of our heart and says, come on, I need you to be and do. I need you to truly go out into the world and live and, and be beyond the self. And yeah, even people that, you know, we wouldn't think as a saint. My, my dad, you know, had a terrible temper, but he was probably the most generous person I ever met. You know, um, there's, there's somebody in our lives. We could think of our grandparents. We could think of our greater family beyond there who we miss today. What was it that was beautiful about their lives? Now there's that communion that they have with the Lord in his garden, where then there is perfection realized. Can we make this world here and now a beautiful city? Can we reap the kingdom of God here in truth and practice and in being? Yes. It's not poetry. It's truth. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Lord Jesus, we thank you for how beautiful you truly are. Your beauty is that beautiful attitude of gratitude and love to God and to live that love, to be your hands and feet and voice in the world and never be pinned down 
by the evil of the world and our own divisiveness. Help us to continue to grow and be truly living into children of grace and promise. We love you and we praise you. Amen.